You're right. This is what it looks like. This is a Cadillac video. No, you didn't see that wrong. It said the Corvette bin, but you know, sometimes I do take breaks of working on Corvettes to work on my own cars, and one of them is this 1956 Cadillac. So, I've had this car for 10 years. If you're a recent subscriber to the channel, you probably don't know it, but there's like 70 videos that I've made on this car from when I bought it out of some guy's backyard 10 years ago, and slowly basically brought it back to life, and the reason why I don't have a lot of videos on it right now is because I just drive it. There's really not anything that it needs until today. <clears throat> so as you see on the title, it's probably been 10 years since I've done the brakes on this car and I finally, I, I basically made a decision where when I first got it, I was gonna keep it 110% factory stock original, just like Cadillac made it. But I really bought this car to drive my kids around in and one of these things that has always been just okay, but not necessarily really good, was the brakes on this car. If you look back in the other videos, you've seen I've you know rebuilt the master cylinder, did the wheel cylinders, did the drums, and all that kind of stuff. But I finally saved up enough money in order to install basically modern brakes on this car. So here is are basically the components for one side. We have our it's from Caddy Daddy. That's who makes this kit. So we have our new brake um, rotor, we have upgraded um, type bearings, we have brake calipers with pads, and then all the bracketry in order to do it. I also have a master cylinder and a booster combo kit with a custom bracket that they've made in order to fit my Cadillac and not have to reposition all the uh, to break stuff and change things and blah 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 in order to make it work and I'll explain that here in a second So you look in the engine bay of my Cadillac you can see that it's fairly original I mean the carburetor is different, but other than that everything is basically stock so And these Cadillac brake kits There's different years that fit different cars and all that kind of stuff like for example 56 is a one-year only car and The kit is one year only 55 and down is a kit and then 57 and up is a kit you can buy cheaper kits. So there's, there's two different types of kits online. First, let's talk about the brakes. So there's disc brake conversions that you can buy for half of what Caddy Daddy charges, but you have to get different wheels. You can't use your stock wheels. So if you think about it, the extra 500 bucks or so, you're gonna be spending on wheels and tires. So pay to get the kit that's more expensive to just keep the wheels and tires that you have. On my car, the wheels and tires are basically already uh, they're not new, but they've already paid for, so why would I need to go get another set? I don't need another, another cost. Second, we're going to talk about the brake, master cylinder, and booster combo kit. So, as you can see, this is kind of a goofy um, setup by Cadillac. So we have the master cylinder and the booster here in the front next to the radiator and this really crazy long rod that goes to the brake pedal. You have two options. One is the kit from Caddy Daddy, which bolts in right here, has its own rod, and you're good to go. Or two, you can spend less money and take more time, and you can delete what the, what's called this air box right here. So basically, air comes in through this, um, the cowling at the windshield, goes through this air box, and then there's a vent underneath the dash that can blow fresh air on you. I love that, especially in the summer. This car does not have air conditioning, that makes it just much that much more enjoyable to use. Also, that box supplies fresh air to your blower motors, which then in turn blow it through your heater and into the car. You would also be losing, besides all that, you'd also be losing your wiper washer, which for most people that doesn't matter because it doesn't work for them. But I didn't want to delete this because I like this. I also think that the plate and the master cylinder that sticks out here is kind of ugly. I also have heard that you have to do mess around with your brake pedal, et cetera, et cetera, and get all that different than factory for that to work. And I'm like, eh, I'm not a fan of that. So obviously the first step in installing this brake system is you gotta take the old stuff off. And it's funny, I haven't, I haven't been um, in these brakes since I put them on. And I don't know how long ago that was, but I'll have to look back at the old videos and see.
with the drum off, you can see that basically all that's left is this backing plate, um, the brake wheel cylinder, and then the hose. So what we're gonna do is disconnect this hose, let it all, the fluid leak out, and then we can work on removing uh, the cylinder and then this backing plate. So you'll be removing all four of these bolts and then this piece will come out. Um, you will be reusing at least one of the bolts and you will be attaching the bracket onto the spindle which is behind the backing plate. It's funny, these wheel cylinders are original to the car. Looks like maybe one had gone bad already. But I rebuilt them probably 10 years ago. Let's see. Oh, yep. Well, maybe because I let this, the tension off. It sure didn't seem like it was leaking before, but... Either way, I bet they could be rebuilt again with a new kit. This is what I'm trying to say. These hoses have a, a date of 8 of 2012, which is right about when I did the brakes last. So, you know, once every 10 years, taking the wheels off your Cadillac, that's not bad, right? I remember these bottom, these bottom bolts actually have cotter pins in them. Why? I don't know, but they do. plate which then leaves us with just the spindle believe it or not under all this dirt um, there are spacers in between the bolts these top bolts these spacers are going to come out and the kit will have new spacers same with these bolts right here that bolt and that bolt. I do want to show you there is a special bolt. You see this bolt right here? It has a special head and what that does is it contacts the knuckle when the car is turned that limits the steering. And so that needs to stay. So this bolt stays and this one can also get replaced. Now we're going to clean up the spindle and we're going to install our new bracket. The reason I bought this kit is because you can use your factory original wheels with the disc brakes. Now, with that being said, the instructions that it came with were very, very lacking in clarity or anything. They basically say, bolt it on like the picture. Okay, so <laughs> that's what we're gonna have to do. Hopefully you guys can figure some stuff out. So there's a spacer that needs to go on, on here. Just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and bolt on this bracket. So if you look on the back, you can see there's two, there's two spacers. So those basically take the place of these big ones that we had. So what we're gonna do, Now 
Now, I have had arguments, or not arguments, but discussions with various people I know talking about caliper in the front versus caliper in the back. Um, what I've surmised is it doesn't really matter which way you put it. Um, as long as the caliper, caliper will bleed out correctly. We don't know if that's how it's going to work in this case yet. But we're going to put it on the front because, well, I like it better on the front. I work on Corvettes. They look like they should go on the front. But anyway, um, we're going to do it this way first, see how it goes. And then we're going to go from there. Next is this bottom bolt. Now, um, I, I'm guessing you could probably use the old bolt that was in here. Um, it should work well enough, but I'm going to go with the bolt that they supplied with the kit. Put that in just like that. As for the torque values, well, they didn't give you any of that either. So I'm going to use my impact and just zip them on as tight as, not as tight as possible, but tight enough that I don't think it will come off. And then when you're done, make sure you put a, a nut with a lock washer onto this nut right here to hold it in. So then that way this bump stop stays where it's at. You don't want to take that one off. After packing the bearing, we're going to install the bearing. And then we're going to put a grease seal down. Like that. That will then go over. There are differences of opinion on how much grease you should put wet and where. But I feel like you can never have too much. I mean, obviously you could put the entire jug on there and that would be too much, but... on there just like that. Oh. See that might be too much grease. <laughs> that we might have a problem with. Now we're doing the passenger side right now and it does come with new um, nuts, but the problem is in Cadillac, at least this year Cadillac, the driver's side is the opposite thread. So this is right hand thread and it'll thread right on, which is great, except for the other side's not. And with that being said, you have to reuse your old um, nut, castle nut for the other side, but we're going to use the new one for this side. So what I have heard about these nuts, so there's a way to put a cotter pin in this way and a way to put a cotter pin in this way, since these are new bearings. So what I want to do is I want to get this as tight as I can by my fingers, which is about right there. And then I'm going to take the wrench and then I'm going to make it just a little bit tighter like that. And we're good. That's all we're going to do. Again, many people will tell you there's different ways to do this and that my way is wrong. But you know what? It's always worked for me. I did that 10 years ago and those ball bearings look good. So just like that. So now we're going to clean out inside of here, get as much dust out for here as we can. And then we'll put the dust cap on. And we are done with the rotor, the bracket, and the bearings. All right, last we're gonna put the caliper on, and the calipers are left and right. This one actually says right on it. And depending on how you put the brakes on, you might be using, if you put the brakes on the back, you use the left caliper, caliper here in order to get this 
fitting, which is right here. This is where the uh, brake hose is going to attach to. So it's fairly simple. It slides on like a like a newer car. It just slides right on, and then you have bolts in the back that will then hold the caliper where it needs to go. Like that. Here's the bolts, and then they come with a Allen key. Looks like they already kind of shaved it down for you, which is nice to fit these bolts. And it just goes right in just like that. You got to kind of move the caliper around just a little bit to be able to get the bolt to find its home. So that one's in. Move to the bottom one. And that's pretty much it for mounting the bracket, the rotor, the pads, and the caliper.